Welcome to Chemistry with Caroline. In this video, we're going to look at the alkylation of amines. So alkylation just meaning that we're adding an alkyl group. So that could be any alkyl group. In this case, I have an alkyl bromide here, specifically ethyl bromide. And what I need is some source of amine. So in this case, I'm using the simplest amine in ammonia, so NH3. And then I'm using an alkyl group with a leaving group on it. So that's what the important part is. We need a leaving group for this reaction to proceed. So the ammonia is going to act as a nucleophile, and the carbon with the bromine on it is going to act as our electrophile. So the ammonia will attack that carbon with the leaving group on it, and that leaving group will leave. So this will be an SN2 style reaction because we have a primary alkyl halide here. That will give me this compound. which we can describe as an ammonium salt. So the ammonia was neutral. And so when it attacks and donates those electrons, it's going to become positive. And so that nitrogen with the positive charge and the extra proton is called an ammonium derivative. The EM tells me that I have a positive charge there. And it's a salt because we have this spectator ion, in this case the leaving group, sort of in close proximity to it there because of that mutual attraction of those opposite charges. And so amines are pretty good bases. And so the amine can act as a nucleophile, but also as a base. So this ammonia, another ammonia in solution, could come in and deprotonate my salt. I'm going to draw equilibrium arrows here for an acid-base reaction. And that would give me this compound, plus I would have an ammonium conjugate acid there. Now, this is a primary amine now, because I have one alkyl group on it. Now you can continue to alkylate this compound until you get all the way up to four alkyl groups on it. So let's go to the next page and look at what happens when we continue to add more alkyl groups. So the compound that we just made could go on to attack another equivalent of ethyl bromide in solution. So if it comes in and we do another SN2 style attack, we would get this product. So another salt here, because again, I'm going to have a positive charge on the nitrogen, and that bromide is going to be in close proximity because of that attraction of those opposite charges. And amines are good bases, so an ammonia that hasn't reacted yet, or maybe another equivalent of this ethylamine that's been generated, can come in and deprotonate the salt that I've made here. And that will generate my neutral secondary amine, And then also as a byproduct, ammonium in this case, because I used ammonia as a base. So it's the same mechanisms that we saw the first time, right? It's an SN2 attack where the amine is the nucleophile, the bromine is the leaving group, followed by a deprotonation. And so I started with ammonia. I generated a primary amine and now a secondary amine. So let's go to the next slide and look at a tertiary and a quaternary amine. So if I start off with that secondary amine that I just made, I can add another equivalent of ethyl bromide. It'll be an SN2, like we've done twice now, followed by the removal of a proton to give me this final amine structure. So this would be a tertiary amine, because I have three groups. And you can even do that one more time. Same mechanism. And I'm going to put that over here for clarity. That would generate a quaternary amine. And that would be a salt, because there's no way to deprotonate this molecule. It has all alkyl groups on there. There's no hydrogens. So a nitrogen with four bonds and no lone pairs of electrons will be positive. And so any quaternary amine is going to be a salt. These salts are sometimes used as phase transfer catalysts. Uh, you also see quaternary ammonium salts in the Hoffman elimination. So these, although they're charged, are actually present in a number of different applications throughout organic chemistry. So the alkylation of amines proceeds through an SN2 mechanism followed by a deprotonation. The issue with this reaction is that you often get a mixture of products. So we just looked at how to generate primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary amines. 
in solution, some of those amines are going to react incompletely. Some of them may alkylate all the way to a quaternary amine. So you end up with a mixture of products that's difficult to separate. And so that can be a challenge of the alkylation of amines. This has been a look at the mechanism for alkylation of amines and the potential products one can form. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Thanks.